Are you, are you watching me eat? It's kind of creeper. Well, say what? While you're here, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's happening in my mouth, down my stomach, with this pizza. I'm glad you showed up. So, the digestion starts in my mouth with a mechanical digestion, with my teeth and my uh, tongue moving and grinding all that food around. I create this wad of food called the bolus. Now, it's not just mechanical digestion that occurs, but also chemical digestion. And that's going to use my salivary glands to aid in that digestion, that breakdown of that food, that exquisite pizza. Back to this. So, three salivary glands. They're going to produce saliva, salivary saliva, and that's going to help break down those carbohydrates there. The three, you have the parotid, the sublingual, and the submandibular. Now, the parotid, you can actually take your tongue and move back, and you're going to feel like a bumpiness, all right? That's actually the parotid gland. Sublingual is under the tongue, all right? And so, lingual, linguistics, we use the tongue for enunciation of words. So, that's where it gets its uh, name there, sublingual there, so below the tongue. And the submandibular, <clears throat> you, can actually, you can't actually feel that one. It's below the mandible there, uh, which kind of a lot of people call like the jawbone. That's where that one's located. But they're all going to produce uh, saliva. Now, the saliva is going to start breaking down the carbohydrates with an enzyme. I remember enzymes from biology class? I knew you did. Now, enzymes are proteins. And proteins, uh, these enzymes are biological catalysts. They are going to speed up a chemical reaction. Now, this general generic picture here is of a protein here, of an enzyme. And you can see it's kind of wound up, looks like a bunch of string roped up. And that is um, the amino acids, the long chain of amino acids. And they're all folded up. That's going to give it structure. And the structure of a protein, of an enzyme, is going to determine its function. So, what are carbohydrates? Well, a lot of times we refer to them as saccharides as well. Polysaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides. And it all comes down to how many there are when we're talking about them. If it's poly, it means many. Okay? So, talking about at that point, more than one. But to be really specific, if you just have two, you just say disaccharide. Di meaning two, and then mono meaning one. So a polysaccharide here, um, this is a polysaccharide. This is a long chain. And you can, there's, there's more, right? You can add more on there, and you have a, a larger uh, polysaccharide there. And then sucrose here, table sugar, is a disaccharide, and glucose a monosaccharide. What I want my body to do is get that pizza down into the glucose uh, structure there. And that's going to be great for absorption and usage later on as well. So where do we find them? Well, in plants, we can find them as starches. And in our foods from plants, like bread, potatoes, rice, uh, grains, uh, even in fruits, okay? We get, our, uh, we get a lot of disaccharides in fruits as well. And then for humans, or animals really, uh, it's stored as glycogen, okay? So... Uh, the glycogen can be stored, there's a lot of glycogen stored in our legs, you know, we need a lot of energy there for that fight or flight. Uh, and then also in our liver as well, so while we're sleeping at night, when our body needs energy to, you know, continue life functions while we're sleeping, that's where it's going to get that, and then we're going to replenish that the next day with breakfast. So starch, plants are getting it from photosynthesis, they're creating the sugars, they're storing it in starch, also cellulose as well, for the cell walls, but right now we're just focusing on uh, starch and glycogen. So amylase, how does it do it? Well, it does it through hydrolysis. Hydro meaning water and lysis meaning break. So we're going to use water to break the bonds between the sugar molecules. In our example here, we have sucrose and we have water molecule going in. So one water molecule is going in and when it does that, we have two hydrogens, one oxygen. Okay, let's pay attention to that. And we have one oxygen right here. Uh, that is holding these two together. Well, that one oxygen is now right here. One of those hydrogens is here. And the other hydrogen and this oxygen here are now here. So that's how we're getting this 
C6H12O6 uh, for the glucose and C6H12O6 for the fructose as well from the addition of the water, which also breaks apart the two uh, sugar molecules, two saccharides there. Now, salivary amylase is going to, again, help speed up that digestion of starch. Right? It, it could, over a long time, it could break it up, but it's going to take too long. Right? It, it needs to be done quicker so the body can actually use it and so that we don't die. So it starts in, uh, again, in the mouth. And, well, here, I got a friend here that can help us. Come over. It's all right. Don't be shy. It's okay. That's all right. Okay. Do um, you mind if I, uh, you're, you're good, right? The heart? Well, it's not like you really have one anyways. And the liver. Nope. Okay, so now that we have a better view here, let's take a look. So, <clears throat> food goes in the mouth. It's going to go down <clears throat> the pharynx, which you can't really see right now. Um, and then from there into the esophagus. And it's going to run all the way down into the stomach. Now, that digestion done by salivary amylase is done from that point to that point. But once it gets to the stomach, it no longer happens anymore. Uh, it's shut down. Enzymes work at specific pHs and temperatures. And the pH in the stomach is a lot different than the pH in the esophagus, uh, the pharynx, and the mouth. It's, it's a much lower pH in there. It's going to shut down that amylase. But the pH in there, um, the other enzymes going on, um, they're going to help continue to break down that pizza, which I don't want to get too cold. Mm, so good. Oh. Um, and continue that breakdown so that we can get that energy uh, for our body to use. No, you're good. No, go back to sleep. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit more disaccharides. Again, just review. Double, all right? Di meaning two, double. And then sucrose is an example of that disaccharide there. Okay? So we're going to break that from a polysaccharide um, of the starches that's in this uh, crust now. Uh, into disaccharides, and then from there into monosaccharides such as glucose. And then the glucose can be absorbed inside of the cells. And we're going to use that glucose uh, to uh, make energy during cellular respiration. So that glucose goes in, <clears throat> C6H12O6 plus oxygen, all right, the oxygen we're breathing in, and we're going to produce carbon dioxide that we're breathing out, water and energy. Energy in the form of what? Did you say ATP? You were paying attention in the biology last year. Okay, so energy is made, right? But let's do a quick review here. Mouth to pharynx. So a lot of food, uh, that bolus is going from the mouth into the pharynx. Now, there are different parts of the pharynx, right? We have the oropharynx and we have the laryngopharynx. Now, the oropharynx is that just that, that mouth part. Uh, the laryngopharynx is that voice box area, right? So the part where, you know, your voice and people flows in basolati, right? So that, that part there. Um, it's going to go down. We're going to watch it here. Food goes in, yum, 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 yum. and it moves in, all right? And the epiglottis actually pushes down so that food doesn't go into our lungs, and it's going to go down the esophagus here, okay? So we're going to pass the laryngopharynx here and into the esophagus. Now, how does it move down the esophagus? Well, it goes through what's called peristalsis. And peristalsis is some involuntary muscle contractions that it kind of moves in a wave. And if you figure, think about the, the food being in between my hands here, it's just kind of a wave, muscle contractions, that go all the way down uh, to the bottom of the esophagus to the cardiac sphincter. And the cardiac sphincter, it's kind of like a doorway opens and closes. A muscle that opens and closes. It's going to allow food uh, to come into the stomach. All right? Now, <clears throat> heartburn is because we have all that high acidic uh, environment in the stomach and materials in there that actually are able to push right back out through that esophagus here that we're seeing right there, that stomach acid. And that burns, and that's where the heartburn is coming from. And it feels like it's our heart because where our heart is located, um, but it actually isn't. It's, it's actually our stomach and our esophagus there. 
All right, so that's basically um, how or the the location, the, the, the travels of my pizza so far. Now, we haven't talked about what happens in the stomach, but we'll get back to that before or after I get some more pizza.